The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Karen, I heard we have a good build idea. Yes, so in a previous episode, we did a research segment about a build suggestion from Reese Gallagher that he submitted on the Element 14 community. Reese wants us to make a Jumanji-like board game, but since there's no actual magic, we have to use technology to make it work. So in the research segment, I had already figured out the design and layout of the actual board where the pawns are gonna move, because mm -hmm. in the movie, all of the paths for the pawns kind of intertwine, but yeah, that we figured work. out that we're gonna use magnets because it's the easiest way to make things move invisibly. So we had to have independent paths for all four pawns. So they all travel on an arc independently, so why don't you tell us about how we're gonna do that? Yeah, I think we can build this project as three separate parts, three separate episodes. Let me draw out a sketch. So you have your game board here, like that, and it's going to have the arcs that the pieces move on inside of it. And then we're also going to have to have a screen which kind of tells you what to do, just like the magical screen in the movie. So when the case opens up, there'll be two halves. There'll be like your magical screen, and then maybe you can put your parts and your wires here. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is going to be the actual game you have to play in order to move your piece. So let's say you roll like, I don't know, an eight. It's like, ooh, I can move eight places, but you have to do something first. Just like in the movie Jumanji, how they had to like fight a monkey mm -hmm. or swing on a vine or something. We'll make some sort of puzzle game that goes down here. Okay. So when it's your turn, you have to actually complete a puzzle that takes like thought and intelligence, Ooh. then your piece moves. So it's like an educational game. I like it. So, okay, so in the movie they have real like wooden dice, but mm -hmm. I feel like it would be too difficult for us to, or it would just be too much extra since yeah. this is already complex. So maybe instead of having physical dice, I know it's gonna be sad to not have physical dice because it would be really cool, but uh, instead what if we just have another like readout screen that randomly generates yeah, you hit a button that roll. rolls the dice for you. Yeah. That could work fine. So we could split this up into three episodes. Part one, which would be today, we'll build the main base with the moving piece mechanisms. Part two, we'll make the logic puzzle that actually drives the gameplay. Then in part three, we'll add the screen, program everything, and then add all the art to make it look cool. What do you think? Sounds awesome. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, like I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Karen drew up an initial design for Heckmungy, and this is what it looks like. Uh, we probably need to do some more artistic stuff to this so it looks less like other things, but I think we can figure that out. So we have some basic layers here. We wanna have an arm layer, and this is what will move the piece, uh, the 23 positions that we have. Let me just show you how this rotates here. So it starts back here, and then it moves 23 places to the center, and then you win. We're thinking we'll use servos. So I've drawn some servos here. It's a standard uh, full-size hobby servo. Should have enough force. But the problem with the servo is it can only rotate 180 degrees, and a lot of servos don't even quite go 180 degrees. And these pieces need to move 230 degrees. So what I've done is I've drawn in a two to one gear ratio on each one of these. So we have a large gear going to a small gear, which means uh, you know, for every revolution of the servo, the smaller gear will make two revolutions, even though it won't, <laughs> because the servo can't even do a full revolution. So if this, if this small gear needs to go 230 degrees and the servo can go 180, if we just double it, then we know we can go 360, which is more than we need, but that's good because, you know, again, the servo might not have its full range. It kind of depends. Larger servos usually actually get pretty close to 180. So I've drawn these parts up in Autodesk Fusion 360. So the larger gear is obviously for the servo and I've put mounting holes in it so we can attach it to the servo's uh, plastic armature that all servos come with. Uh, this part I'm not entirely sure about. So this is the drive gear for the arm and I have a mounting plate here. However, the mounting plate might be a little bit of overkill and it might actually be a better idea to make the mounting plate just also the thing that holds the magnet like this. So instead of using this mounting plate and having multiple layers, we could just put a circular section behind the smaller gear, attach it to an arm, 
and then have a gap here to put the rare earth neomedium magnets. I'm gonna use two of them to hold the pawn in place. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is get these gears 3D printed and then do some foam core mock-ups. Oh, if you're wondering why I'm wearing these antenna, it's because it's alien day. 426, April 26. Because Alien is definitely one of my top five favorite science fiction film franchises. We actually even got cakes for Alien Day. So I got these parts 3D printed. This is the arm. I've integrated it with the gear and I've put in two rare earth magnets. This will fit into a base piece and we'll rotate around it like that. And inside of this, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a uh, nylon spacer. Because it's better for the screw to rotate on the nylon spacer than for it to rotate on, you know, just plastic. So I threaded this bottom piece. So this, you know, in the final unit will bolt into the same base that holds the servos. But for right now, I just want to see if the magnets work. Of course, I don't want this to be too tight. Otherwise, I won't move. The servos are beefy, but we also don't want to uh, strain them. All right, so here's a test pawn that I printed. So this is an OR gate, and it has some screws and nuts in it in the base just so there's something metallic for the magnet to grab onto. Wow, it's magic! So in Jumanji, in the uh, flashback sequence, they see the pieces move and they're like, maybe it's magnets. And then in the present day sequence, they say maybe it's microchips. So in our Hackmanji game, it's going to be magnets and microchips. Let me briefly talk about these gate pawns. Okay, so we have an or pawn and an and pawn. And since there's four players, we will further differentiate these by having a nand and a an nor as well. So I made this little 3D printed ball that we can put on the top of it. And we'll probably also print these in different colors, but these will be the pawns that move around the board. I've rigged up a foam core sample of the depths we will use on the actual hack manji board. So there'll be a lower layer where the servos sit, and then once you put the top layer in place, the teeth of the gears will hopefully mesh with the servos and make everything fit. So what I'm gonna do here is get this in place. That looks right-ish. So the height of this and the height of this represents what my initial designs were for the bottom of the Hackmanji case. Uh, the gears mesh, however, I think they should mesh a little bit more. So I'm gonna try putting in some spacers to raise up the servo so the teeth more fully engage. All right, why don't you put the side on? Do you ever have one of those wooden dinosaurs when you were a kid, like where you put it together? It's like a wood kit. Yeah, I, had, I don't know. I don't remember what it was. I don't think it was a dinosaur. It was something. Was it a possum, maybe? No. Mm, might have been like some kind of building or something. Uh, I see. Okay, so we got this from Karen. As some of you might know, Karen also works at a board game company, so they use this stuff to make pieces. So my thought is we use this and then we cover it with a wide format print of what our art actually is. This was cut by hand, it's not gonna be quite as precise. This is one of our prototypes for what the game itself is. So this will be in a future episode. But we're looking at it now because we just wanna make sure that there's enough room for it to fold flat because these things have a height to them. So that's why there's an indentation there. Yeah, it looks like it fits. Of course, something we'll have to take into account. If we have raised portions in the center where those logic symbols are, we wanna make sure that we don't collide with this. I mean, we could always make this thing a little deeper too, but mm -hmm. you know, that's why we build things one piece at a time. So it'll fold out and then the game portion will be here like, oh, you know, and then there'll be a screen here and then the pieces will move here. All right, looks like the box is pretty solid. Okay. Shall we start gluing it together? Yeah, you want me to drill some holes in here first? So these arms have nylon spacers in them that rotate around the screws. So what we're gonna do here is attach this arm upside down. So I need to, okay, yeah, be about like that. Onto the screw and we'll start the screw through it and then we'll use the airplane remote 
with the servos to control it. That's why I put so many holes in the bottom of this so we can assemble it easily. So I'm gonna link this into the gear. All right, where's that pawn piece? Let's see if we can find it. Let's see the magic. Oh, wait, there it is. Rip to Manji. <laughs> I mean, hack Manji. Let's try it with the proper surface. Jumanji! I remember I worked at a movie theater when Jumanji came out. And uh, basically, Jumanji only made money when Toy Story sold out and people needed a movie to see. So it's like, oh, we can't go into Toy Story? I guess we can go to Jumanji. Let's try something, Felix. Let's try it with, all right, stop. So right now we just have a screw and some nuts inside of this. I wonder what would happen if we used a magnet in the piece. It might be a little too strong. Try that. Huh. I think if we had some more space between it, we might be able to lessen the effects yes, of the magnet, yes. but still have more force than we would with the metal. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Let's use my little chiseler. Yeah, all right, let's line up. Where are we? All right, try that. Oh. <laughs> Always covering their tracks. All right, try that. It looks like a Ouija board uh, plank shit. Oh. 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 Try to do small, slow motions like you're going from piece to piece. Do you think it works better? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's compare. I'm having a little bit of fun. See, if I go fast with this, it'll lose. It. See, I can't, I can't, can't keep it. Keep it on my side. Okay, now try to lose it. Can't lose it. Is it staying on? Yeah, can't lose it. Won't go away. Well, one challenge with using that big magnet, though. Well, the magnet is almost as big as the base of this, so we'd have to kind of redesign this base, which means this whole part might get bigger. So what I could do next is reprint this on its side. We get a lot better results when we actually put a magnet on the pawn as well. So when Felix runs it like this, go ahead, move it, try to lose it. It stays on pretty good. Now when we add something on top of it, try it again, we tend to lose it more. Try it now. So this is a big piece, but it's moving flat through the air instead of sideways through the air. All right, I'm gonna reprint this and then we'll try it again. All right, here's the base that I drew up. Let's extrude it. Okay, so I made four little feet with fillets around them. The reason I did that was because you wanna have a small surface area so it doesn't drag, which you also don't want it to tip over. So the feet will help stabilize it and the fillet will keep it from having a hard edge that will snag and create more friction. On the inside, we put the magnet and then I drew a base sketch, which I can create all the gates from. Kind of a universal gate, if you think about it. <laughs> and we have an and, an or, and then we have two with a hole in the top. This will be the nor and the nand. So we can 3D print a little ball section and attach that to make it a different gate. So those will be our four players, and, or, nor, nand. So the top part with the gate should slip into the bottom pretty well. There's a little bit of a gap. Um, 3D printers tend to have a little bit of slop or their tolerances are worse than other types of CNC machines. So I usually do like 0.0 to uh, Imperial, just to be sure. All right, so I'll get these printed up and then we'll test it out on the rig. I 3D printed a new base that has the magnet in it here, and then there's different tops that go on it. I'll print these in color later on, but for now, you know, gray is good enough. So this is an or gate, it snaps in place. So my theory is it was the height of the pawn causing it to flip over, not necessarily the size of the weight. Let's test it out. I'm gonna to try to lose it now. It stays on pretty good. What I'm gonna do is print some more of these bases and put in magnets, and then I will put on different tops so we have our four game pieces. There'll be an or, a nor, an and, and a nand. Those will be the four players. And then we'll have icons in the art that indicate which player goes where when you start the game, because it's still up to the humans to like put the pieces in place. So Ben, hack Manji. Yes, we've got a pretty good start on it. So Karen drew up this a few months ago, a basic shape of how the pieces can move around the board. Mm -hmm. And then the challenge was to figure out how to make that happen. So that's what we worked on in this episode. We have a series of servos and gears and arms with magnets that move the pieces around to match those arcs. And we've rigged up this airplane servo controller so you can test it out easily. So do you wanna give it a shot? Move up and down on the throttle okay. and you can move the piece. It's moving on its own. It must be ghosts. 
Wow, that doesn't- Wow, it's just like Dumanji. I mean, Hackmanji. And then this is the prototype Ooh. for the Hackmanji logic puzzle. So we made this indented enough that this can fold into it and the banana plugs, you know, Excellent. fit. Yeah. Now it's time for a research update. So Power Glove. Yeah. I had to order one off eBay. So the reason we bought another Power Glove was because the one that Karen dug up didn't have the sensor bar that goes in the TV. And without yeah. that, we can't actually make it work. Well, yeah, there's no way to troubleshoot it because there's no connection to troubleshoot. Yeah. See how functional this works as like a work glove. It's not bad, got decent flexibility. Here, let's try something. Oh. All right, hold out your glove. <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> I wanted to see if it's safe. It's like a dying seal sound. <laughs> Ooh, is this it? If I had two Oh right my gosh, it has the original instructions. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> You're in a similar condition. Do you want to wear this one? Sure. Well, I don't really want to, but I will. So, oh, we could be like a gang of power glove people. So this sensor bar. Yeah, how does this work? Yeah, this went on the TV, like okay. this. Okay, so this would go on your 19 inch Magnavox back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, and these look like speakers. So, yeah, do these emit sound? Yeah, I, I believe- I see a resistor in there, that's all I can see. <laughs> right, so this detects the sound from the three locations. Or maybe this admits the sound. I don't know which way it goes. We'll have to figure that out. But hmm. basically it can, you know, triangulate it and figure out where you are in space. So it can see the rotation too, because there's two points. Mm. Just like how the Wii, you know, the sensor bar mm -hmm. had two lights on it. So it's like it's like a landing strip. Hmm. Yeah. So this could this could do more than people thought, but the only game that actually took advantage of that was Super Glove Ball, and I found this at MGC. Mm. So the plan is for a future episode, we're going to do a teardown on this, see what makes it tick, and then try to use the ultrasonic sensors to make it do something else, like perhaps move a mouse around a computer display. That sounds like it'll be fairly simple. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. So yeah, we'll see you then. That's all the time we have for today. To recap, we first built a base with gears and moving arms to simulate the magic of the pieces moving around the board. In a future episode, we're going to continue by making the logic puzzle portion of the game. These are the puzzles you actually have to solve with real cables and real circuits in order to advance the pieces. And then in part three, to finish off the project, we'll attach everything together, wire it up, program it, and then add all the art to make it look nice. If you have any ideas for our Hackmanji game, let us know in the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Yeah, let's hack this. Pfft, that didn't work worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight is 50-50. Or 2020. <laughs> That was almost as dumb as that thing I said yesterday about Europe. Yeah, you know, I never realized she had custom Reeboks in the movie, honestly. Although, you know, in Batman, the real Batman, the Tim Burton one, yeah. he's got Nikes. So Batman's boots are Nike shoes. The lunatics are running the asylum now. Sounds like, uh, who's that guy that died? Alan Rickman. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.